Perhaps you've seen dogs on shows like Cops, searching for narcotics. Maybe you've watched the evening news and seen military handlers using dogs to search for bombs like IEDs. But did you know that we use dogs in everyday urban pest control? Our dogs search for bed bugs so that you can sleep tight at night. Bed bugs are real. They are not a myth from a children's nursery rhyme, and they are not an urban legend. They feed exclusively on human blood, and they are superb travelers. Bed bugs hitch rides on their unsuspecting human hosts, and they have established themselves all over the world, even our own community. They feed mostly at night while we're sleeping, and they scurry back to their harborage area undetected until we either have so many bites we begin to thoroughly investigate, or until their population grows so large that they begin to leave their telltale signs in visible locations, like spotting on our sheets. Thankfully, man's best friend has an amazing nose. It's actually it's more than just a nose. It is a complete system made up of hundreds of millions of neurons and located in a part of their brain called the olfactory epithelium. And this system allows dogs to sniff for bed bugs and find them at all stages of development, from eggs to their five nymphal stages to mature adults. Using dogs, we search places like hotels, apartments, schools, offices, libraries, assisted living facilities, hospitals, trains, maybe even your neighbor's house. Using dogs is more efficient and more accurate than a visual inspection alone. You see, when we use a dog to conduct a search, we don't have to take your mattress off your box springs. We don't have to tear apart your bed rails. We don't have to pull the carpet up off the floorboards or remove electrical outlet covers from the walls. We simply let the nose do the work. We were once called to a college campus. They had a bad outbreak of bed bugs going on in their dorms. They'd begun treatment on some of the rooms, including a student's room. He was a very popular guy. He was captain of an athletic team. He had a flat screen TV and a sweet gaming system. And his teammates and his friends spent many hours gaming in his room, which is probably how he got the bugs to begin with. But needless to say, pretty soon, his teammates and friends had bed bugs in their dorm rooms. And as you might imagine, there were some girls that had bed bugs in their dorm rooms thereafter. And this is how bed bugs spread. They spread like wildfire if an infestation isn't caught early on. By using the dogs, we were able to search hundreds of dorm rooms and multiple buildings over the course of two days. The pest control company, in turn, was able to treat all the infested units at the same time and stopping the spread. Can you imagine how much pesticide use we saved? Using dogs is an efficient way to stop a lot of pesticide use. For example, instead of treating an apartment two, three, maybe four times, now we might only treat it one time. And that really helps us, because by treating it one time and then having the dogs come in and do a search, if they don't make an alert, no further treatments are required. Huge cost savings and a big savings in the amount of pesticides being used. Now, the scariest aspects of bed bugs it isn't that they feed on our blood or that their population can double every two weeks. No, the scariest aspect is that they're becoming more and more resistant to the pesticides that were designed to kill them. Overuse and inefficient use of these pesticides have contributed to the bug's resistance, and it's getting very dangerous. By using dogs, like I said earlier, we can cut down on the amount of pesticides being used. The dorms, for example. What was great about using the dogs in that situation is that by pinpointing which rooms needed to be treated, they treated only those rooms and not the entire building or multiple buildings. Can you imagine how much pesticide was saved? What an impact that was? Now, pesticides are far safer today than they were 20, 10, 10 years ago, but they're still dangerous to our environment. The application of pesticides is thought to be one of the most significant factors affecting biodiversity. Tiny little microorganisms that are in our soil and our waterways are killed by pesticide runoff. 
These microorganisms are the first step in the food chain from which all life relies upon. The good news is that every day we work with pest control companies that are implementing a system called Integrated Pest Management, IPM. IPM calls for, in part, using pesticides as a very last resort. So we use things like vacuuming, steaming, heat treatment, and of course deploying the dogs. And that goes a long way into reducing pesticide use. Unfortunately, many people try to do themselves pest control. Now, I love a DIY project as much as the next guy, but do-it-yourself pest control is a horrible idea. Every day we enter homes and have to tell people that not only can we not inspect their property, but they need to take precaution when they clean it up. They should use gloves, proper eye protection, maybe even respiratory equipment. We enter properties where they've used over-the-counter inefficient sprays and it drips from the ceilings to the floorboard. Or they use powders like magic fairy dust and it falls out of the outlets. It's terrible. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. You see, hiring a professional who's using a controlled product and who is licensed and monitored to use that is far safer than doing it yourself. Now, as fascinating as pest control is, it's not why I entered this line of work. I entered the line of work because of the dogs. I don't breed dogs. In fact, we don't even buy dogs from specific breeders. We don't even buy specific breeds. We get our dogs from shelters, rescues, and from pet owners who are at their wit's end. They've had these dogs. You've seen these dogs. They can't control them. They call them untrainable. Your neighbor might have one. It barks constantly. It runs the fence, digs holes, escapes brings you its favorite toy over and over and over and over again. These are the dogs that we love. These dogs thrive in the environment that we provide them. You see, we give them a purpose and a place to expel that energy, and we give them a person. Jimmy, well, I'm Jimmy's person. He was a, a pound puppy. You would never believe the dramatic difference training makes with these dogs. You wouldn't even recognize the dog after a few weeks. They're totally different. They're not chewing apart the house. They're not the same dogs that were escaping the backyard. And they're not the dogs that were quite possibly days away from euthanasia at a shelter. Now, the training process is really fun. It is uh, all positive reward. But first, I want to show you a picture of another dog. This is Nick. Nick was a rescue from a county shelter, and he was adopted by a wonderful lady who wanted a walking companion in the evenings and on the weekends. She was an experienced dog owner, and after about a week, she realized Nick wanted way more than after work and weekend walks. He needed a full-time job, and now he has it. He works 40-plus hours a week with his handler, goes home to the family in the evenings, and he transforms into a magnificent couch potato. You'll find that all of our dogs are relaxed and happy. They've had a great day at work. They've met new people. They've gone to location, location. Jimmy's never met a stranger, and he loves all the car rides. It really is a wonderful job for these dogs. Some of our dogs are trained with food. To put the training simply, and I'll just kind of go over what we do, we train them to associate the smell of live bed bugs with their favorite reward. For Jim, it's his ball. Not this little ball, but I didn't want to carry a big ball. <laughs> He'll do anything for his ball. Search apartments all day long. Sit. Good boy. For our beagle, Elton, <laughs> he searches for food. And I'd like to show you a quick video of Elton in a training situation. As you can see, I'm not doing much to help him. He's searching on his own. I'm just trying to keep the leash out of the way. Jimmy. <laughs> Elton was a rescue from a central uh, Alabama county shelter. And this is a training situation that we don't always put the hides in the bed because that's the most obvious space a lot of, space a lot of times. But we don't often, you know, we don't always find them in beds. I love how his lips hover. Right there. <laughs> Elton's semi-retired now. 
He prefers five-star hotels on the beach instead of the desert apartment searches. Now you can tell he's slowed down and he's stopping. Oh, there's his alert. I give him a little pull. Are you, are you sure? Did you find him? Can we verify our alert? Good boy. And he was correct. There was a vial of bed bugs there. It's a great game for these dogs. It's like hide and seek and freeze tag all at once. <laughs> so now you know, dogs work in everyday pest control. And I've got the best job in the world. I get to work with my best friend. I get to give consumers peace of mind and cost reduction. I get to play a small but significant role in helping the environment. Using dogs and pest control is a win for the consumer, a big win for the environment, and of course, a win for these amazing dogs. Thank you.